There's a fire starting in my heart, reaching a fever pitch, and it's bringing me out the dark. Finally, I can see you crystal clear. Go ahead and sell me out, and I'll lay your ship bare. Be how I leave with every piece of you. Don't underestimate the things that I will do. There's a fire starting in my heart, reaching a fever pitch, and it's bringing me out the dark. The scars of your love remind me of us. They keep me thinking that we almost had it all. The scars. You're here. Let's um, go ahead and greet one another. Say hi to somebody that you haven't met, somebody that you have, and then you can stay seated, I guess. Yeah. Hey, come on up to the front, y'all. Lots of space up here. Bring it up. True family. Settlers, come on. Bring it up. Good morning. I'm Marianne Novak, and I'm a member here at Mumsy, and I'm grateful to have the day off so I can be here with all of you today. So happy to see all of you. Today, Pastor Brian will be wrapping up our series, Apples to Oranges, The Comparison Trap, and he will be talking about how comparison leaves us bitter. When you came in today, you received a program and inside your program is your connection card. And if you are a member or a regular attender here at the United Methodist Church, we ask that you just fill out your name 
and your email address. And on the front, there's this little box down here. And if you would uh, check the appropriate box, we'd appreciate it. And if you're a first-time guest, we're really grateful you're here today. Thank you for choosing to spend your morning with us. And we'd like to get to know you a little bit better, so we would ask that you would also fill out your name and your email address and check the appropriate box and give us any other information that you are comfortable with sharing. Uh, see, Hold on to those cards um, until the end of the service and just put it in the offering basket. On Saturday, July 13th, our church will be um, one of the participants of the Monticello Garden Walk. And what that means is there will be about 150 people that will be walking around looking at our landscape. And we decided we would like to be hospitable and have cookies and something to drink in our uh, common grounds. So we are hoping that we will find a few people that are willing to donate some, some cookies or homemade goodies. And if you are, if you would just sign up on the back of the connection card and have them here probably that Friday or by 8 o'clock Saturday morning. Uh, please take a moment to pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day and this church where we can worship with you and fellowship together. Please, Holy Spirit, open our hearts and our minds to receive the message that Pastor Brian is about to deliver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and worship together. Oh, 
She became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of, the, some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you so angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, you will if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not what is right, sin is crouching at the door, it desires to have you, but you must master it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out of the field, and while they while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The word of God for the people of God.
Today, I just give thanks for this amazing day um, and just this opportunity to come and worship. And I pray that as Pastor Brian gives us the message that you open up our hearts to receive um, whatever uh, you need us to hear, whatever you need us to do and how you need to move in our lives today. I pray that you open our hearts to receive um, your word. In your name pray. Amen. Let's just sing that chorus one more time.
sí. As we begin this morning, I just want to draw your attention to the insert that's in your bulletin that uh, has the list of campers that are going to be uh, going to um, horse camp. We've got a couple elementary age going to horse camp this week, and then uh, a whole bunch going to uh, to senior high camp at, at Epworth Forest. Hope that you will keep them in your prayers. Also, that um, on the back is kind of a guide to prayer of how you might uh, pray for them through, throughout this week and, and also for, for the leadership. And actually, I just want to pause right now and, and have a quick word of prayer for those going to camp. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that uh, camping provides. We just pray for your blessing upon uh, our campers going to, to Epworth Forest and to horse camp this week. Also for all the other campers that they'll be joining there, just pray for your, your blessing upon the, their time there. Pray for safety and travel to and from camp. I pray for safety during the week. Also, Lord, I just pray that your Holy Spirit will, will work in, in hearts and lives, drawing them closer to, to you and, and helping each of them as, as they return home to live um, in a way that uh, reflects Jesus just a, a little more clearly in, in their lives. Lord, I just pray for your blessing upon all that, that haps, happens at camp and, and for all the details that, uh, that come together to, to make that happen. I also pray for the leaders, just give them the, the strength that they need and, uh, and also uh, the, the perseverance as they, they go on, on little sleep some nights and just watch over them and guide them. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, this morning, um, we're concluding a series that we've been calling Apples to Oranges and talking about uh, a comparison trap. You know, when we started this series, we, we talked uh, about um, how comparison can kill contentment, how as we compare our, ourselves to others, that can, can bring a, a discontent within our own spirit. You know, last week, Pastor Justin talked about how... Um, how comparison can lead to um, jealousy. Was that right? It was, no, it would talk some about jealousy. It was uh, pride, yeah. pridefulness. Um, you know, so comparison can lead to, to pridefulness as we compare ourselves to others. It, it's an issue that uh, we do that in a way that, that sometimes builds ourselves up at, at the expense of putting others down. Well, this morning we're going to, to conclude the series as we, we talk about uh, comparison, you know, that, that leads to bitterness. Now, bitterness has been described as drinking poison and hoping someone else dies from it. You know, that's not how it works. You know, bitterness can eat us alive and no one else experiences the ill effects. You know, in this morning's scripture reading, uh, it was a reading uh, about Cain and, and Abel. I'm getting feedback up here or, or echoes. Are you guys hearing that out there? No. So as we talk about Cain, Cain and Abel, we see that Cain was bitter toward his brother Abel. You know, and, and Cain was so bitter, now I'm not hearing anything, but uh, I'll just trust you guys, whatever you do. So. Uh, Cain became so bitter with his brother that he went out and, and killed him. Now, God knew what had happened, uh, but God went to, um, to Cain and said, so Cain, where's your brother Abel? What happened to Abel? And, and, and Cain's response to God was, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? You know, Cain knew exactly what had happened. He knew exactly what he had done. But yet he, he lied to God. Bitterness can cause our hearts to become hardened and, and we begin to, to, care, to not care for another person's well, well-being. Cain's heart had become so hardened that he no longer cared about his brother. And not only that, Cain's heart had become so hardened that, that he even lied to God. You know, bitterness can destroy relationships. Bitterness can even destroy our relationship with God. 
Well, as we look at this passage this morning, I'm going to kind of work backwards. So we started with, um, you know, with Cain killing Abel and, and God asking what, what happened to, to Abel. Now, if we back up to, to verse 8, you know, we see what bitterness did to Cain. He became a schemer and, and a conniver. You know, it wasn't an issue that Cain and Abel were out in the field and they happened to get into an argument and it got a bit heated and, and uh, Cain killed his brother. No, you know, this was premeditated. Cain knew what he wanted to do. He knew what he intended to do. He had this plan. He had this scheme and he talked his brother into going with him out into the field. And as they were out in the field, he, he put the plan into action and he killed his brother. He knew full well what he was planning to do. When we allow bitterness to fester within our hearts, you know, what happens sometimes is that, that we find ourselves doing things that we would have never thought that we could possibly do. We find ourselves doing something, seeking revenge, responding to, to someone in something that another point in our life we would have never dreamed that we would possibly have done something like that. Sometimes bitterness can, can be related to, to unforgiveness. You know, I once knew two sisters that, that didn't speak to one another. You know, and the reason was that their names were Alice and Marie. Alice told Marie's boyfriend a lie about her. And so Marie's boyfriend broke up with her. And when Marie and her boyfriend broke up, Alice started dating Marie's ex-boyfriend. Well, that didn't go well in the household. And so Alice and Marie you know, stopped speaking to one another. They, for years, they didn't speak to one another because of, of what had happened. There, there was unforgiveness in, in their relationship. Even though bitterness can sometimes be related to unforgiveness, it's not always related to unforgiveness. In the case of Cain and Abel, a comparison was the source of Cain's bitterness. How did it happen? Why was it the source? Of, why was comparison the, the source of, of the bitterness? So let's step back in the story some more. Let's go back to, to verse 2 to get some background. You know, Cain was a grain farmer. Abel was a livestock farmer. Both Cain and Abel gave a, uh, an offering to God, but Abel's offering was found acceptable in God's sight. Cain's offering was not. So why was it that one of their offerings was acceptable and the other one was not? Now, there are some who say, well, it's an issue that Cain brought an animal sacrifice and, and that was more acceptable to God than than a, a grain or, or produce sacrifice. But I don't think that's the case. Because God wants us to bring to him what we have, not what we don't have. And so it was an issue that Abel brought livestock because that's what he had. Cain brought, uh, brought an offering of, of grain and produce because that's what he had. So it wasn't an issue of, of what they brought to God that was the problem. But so what, what was the issue? Well, the issue was that God knew their hearts. And Abel brought an offering with a, a right attitude in his heart, and Cain did not. So what the, the story tells us is that as Abel brought a, an offering to God, he brought to God out of the first fruits of his livestock. First fruits meaning what he started with. So let's say it's the spring of the year and... and um, and his first lamb is born, or his first calf is born. You know, Abel set that aside. He marked that animal, the first fruit, the firstborn of his livestock. He set that aside for, for God. And when that calf or, the, or that lamb had grown up, he took it as, as an offering and as a sacrifice to God. So Abel gave to God out of the first fruits of his livestock. Cain, though, we don't know all the details of his offering, but it, what it does tell us is after some time, Cain took an offering to God. It doesn't say that he took the first fruits of, of his harvest. 
It just says after some time. We don't know this, but maybe Cain took an offering to God out of his leftovers. Now, I don't know all the details, but I don't believe it was an issue of, of the fact that Cain took grain or produce versus taking a livestock, but I believe that it was because God knew what was in each of their hearts. You know, whatever motivated Cain to give, the key is that God knew his heart. Cain's offering was not acceptable to God, and Abel's offering was acceptable to God because of the motivation by which each of them gave. Now, when Cain compares himself to Abel, he becomes bitter. But why is he bitter? You know, is he bitter because Cain or because Abel took a, a different offering? To God that he did? Well, no. It really, what Abel took to God, what Abel did, had no effect on, um, on Cain's offering being acceptable or not. It was it an issue that, uh, that Cain was actually bitter with God? Well, was he bitter with God because you know, God had found his, his offering unacceptable and, and he chose to to direct that bitterness toward his brother Abel? Or was it an issue that um, maybe Cain was disappointed in himself? Maybe he was bitter at himself. Maybe he had regret because he wishes he had made different decisions. Maybe he wishes he had taken his offering with a, with a different attitude, a, a different uh, state of, of his heart. You know, a few months ago, um, the the senior high youth group had a had a cooking contest. It was kind of their their own rendition of um, the the master chef, and and so uh, as they came that night, they divided into to five or six teams, and uh, the teams were given twenty five dollars, and they had ninety minutes to go to the to the grocery store and uh, get get ingredients that they would put a, a dish or a meal together and then they would bring it back to the church to be judged. You know, they, they went to various kitchens around Monticello and then brought it back here to, to the church to be judged. Now, one of the rules was that as they started in this hat, there were a number of ingredients like um, onions, uh, barbecue sauce, uh, water chestnuts, um, and they, they pulled one ingredient out, and everyone had to incorporate that ingredient somehow into what they, they created. Well, what they pulled out was jalapeno peppers. So everyone had to include jalapeno peppers in, in, their, in what they prepared in, in some way. So they all did their, their cooking. They brought it back here to the church, and, and I was one of the judges along with Pastor Kelly and, and Shirley Larson and and angel sellers, and, and so we tasted what they had prepared, and I was impressed. I, I was amazed at how well they, they did in, in cooking as a group and, and what they decided to, to make and, and to, to bring it back. I was also pleasantly surprised that they all took the, the seeds of the jalapeno peppers out, and so it wasn't nearly as spicy as I feared because when I heard what the secret ingredient or the required ingredient was, I was concerned about having to um, taste so many different dishes. So they came back and we, we tasted all, the, all that they had made and, and it ended up that um, Pastor Justin's group was, was the one that won. <laughs> well, you know, as we... Um, as we announced the winner, we, we gave the rationale because it really was close. There, there really were a lot of great dishes, but, but uh, the judges came to a decision, and, and we decided that the, um, the reason that Pastor Justin's group won was because of, of tomato soup that they had included with, with the meal. Well, now, Pastor Justin did some confessing last week, and so because of that, I'll, I'll refer to it again. Um, Pastor Justin said he has struggles with humility sometimes. So maybe it was because of his lack of humility. But some of the groups were, were bitter about the, the decision. 
You know, because the tomato soup was simply tomato soup out of a can. They did nothing to it. They, they served us tomato soup straight out of the can, but it wasn't the, decide, it wasn't the main dish, but it was kind of what, what put them over the top. But, you know, so some of the groups were bitter because of the, the decision, and, and so were they really bitter with, with Pastor Justin because of the decisions they made? Were, well, maybe they were actually bitter with the judges and, and just directed that bitterness toward, uh, toward Pastor Justin. Or maybe it was a, a sense of regret of, oh, I wish we would have done differently or, or we would have, have thought, thought about that. Okay, I, I don't want to take this illustration too far, um, and I'm not using it to judge anyone or put anyone down. And in the face of uh, Pastor Justin's confessions, um, this will be his opportunity to show humility um, if anyone brings it up. Uh, the competition was, was really all in, done, in good fun, and it was a great event. But my point is that oftentimes bitterness may be more about us than the person that we're directing our bitterness. Was Cain justified in being bitter at, at Abel? Was Cain actually bitter toward God, and, and he took out his bitterness on unable? Was the root cause of, of Cain's bitterness actually regret in wishing that he would have done something different? I once knew a guy who was in a drunk driving accident. Uh, I met Dan um, when I was in, in seminary, and Dan was a, was a quadriplegic. You know, he had drove one night drunk, no one else was involved in the accident, but he hit a tree. And as a result of, of that accident, he was a quadriplegic for the rest of his life. And when that accident happened, Dan was, was very bitter. He was very bitter at God. You know, God, why would you let this happen? How could you let this happen? And you know, at that point, you know, as he dealt with his bitterness, you know, he also... You know, was, you know, God, I would have rather died than, than to live the rest of my life as a, as a quadriplegic. Well, you know, as, uh, as Dan dealt with his bitterness, one of the things that he, he realized or, or recognized was even though his life had changed, maybe God was giving him a second chance. And that's exactly what happened. He dealt with his bitterness for a long time. But eventually, God used that bitterness to, to be, bring a, a transformation in his life. Let's talk about what bitterness can do in our lives. First of all, bitterness can devastate you spiritually. <clears throat> because of his, his bitterness... Cain let it fester. You know, Cain continued to, to deal with his bitterness. And, and what happened was, you know, he didn't care about his brother anymore. He didn't care uh, about God anymore. And, and, and he lied to, to God. And in the midst of that lying, it, it was a sin. It, it created separation be, between him and God. Bitterness can devastate you spiritually. Bitterness can also take a physical toll on your life. You know, it's been found that people dealing with bitterness you know, may deal with high blood pressure, may deal with, with cardiac issues, may deal with um, you know, digestive issues, may, may deal with ulcers. There's all sorts of things that bitterness, all sorts of ways that bitterness can, can affect us physically. And bitterness can, can affect our relational well-being as well. I've known of people who've had disagreements in their family and that it's caused a, a riff, it's caused a, a divide, and, and there have been people that haven't talked to, to one another for years. You know, I knew a, a lady several years ago that, that she had had a, a disagreement in her family and she was bitter, she was estranged from her family, and, and that bitterness spilled over into other relationships. And it seemed that because of her bitterness, she was <clears throat> pushing people away. <clears throat> she was pushing people away. There, there were um, 
it just created a block in relationships for her. And what happened as she reached old age, she had no one. She had separated herself from everyone in her life that ever cared about her because of bitterness. And in the closing years of her life, she actually hired people to, to come and be with her you know, as, uh, as her life came to an end because it was only those that she could pay that, uh, that would show her any care or give her any attention. So what do we do about bitterness? When we recognize that it needs to be pulled up by the root, what do we do about it? Well, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15, the, the writer tells us, see to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. When we recognize a root of bitterness that's beginning to, to, to take hold in our life, the, the roots are beginning to, to, to grow deeper in, in our lives. We need to do something about it. And what do we do about that bitterness? Well, it, it says that um, in dealing with having that bitterness not take root, that, that we should not miss the grace of God. So how do we do that? Well, if the... If the bitterness, <clears throat> bitterness really is directed toward another person, maybe we need to extend uh, the grace of God to that other person you know, through forgiveness. They may not even know that, uh, that we have a need to, to forgive them, but, but as we recognize that bitterness, we respond with, with grace. We ask God to help us to, to, to let go of that. Maybe the bitterness that, that we're experiencing is bitterness in our own relationship with God. We're, our bitterness is directed toward God. And, and at that point, be honest with God. Let God know of, of your struggles. Let God know of, of your bitterness. And, and in that process, ask God to show you his grace, that you might experience his grace in, in your life, that that, that that bitterness does not continue to, to grip you and, and uh, control you. Maybe it's an issue that, that you have some regret. You wish you would have made a, a different decision. You wish you would have done something different. And, and so maybe it's an issue of showing yourself grace. You're asking God to, to help you to, to, to have a fresh start, a, a new beginning, and, and put whatever that was that, that uh, has caused bitterness to begin to take root in your life, that God would show you grace and and allow you a, a fresh start, a, a new beginning. Extending grace to others or expen, experiencing God's grace in our own life is a way to prevent bitterness from taking root in our life. Extending grace to others or experiencing God's grace in our own life is a way that we can, can prevent bitterness from taking root. Our memory verse this week comes from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. It says, see to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to, to cause trouble and defiles many. So as you seek to apply this verse in, in this coming week, let me give you a, a couple of, of next steps. First of all, don't give bitterness a foothold in your life by comparing your situation or circumstances to anyone else. Don't, don't compare your situation and circumstance to anyone else's situation and circumstance because when you do, uh, there's a danger at that point that that, that comparison can take away your contentment. That, uh, that comparison can, uh, can cause you to, uh, to, to be jealous. That, that comparison can can cause you to be bitter. Secondly, when, when the Holy Spirit reveals to you that, that there's a root of bitterness that's beginning to, to grow in your life, don't ignore that prompting, but, but do something about it. Respond to, to the Holy Spirit's prompting at that point and, 
and, and maybe it's a, extending for forgiveness, maybe it's showing grace, maybe it's asking God to, to help you experience His grace in your own life, maybe it's, it's asking God to, uh, to, to show you grace in a way that you, you have a fresh start. If we don't get rid of bitterness, you know, it, it's not going to affect someone else but it's going to affect us. We don't get rid of bitterness by God changing someone else's heart. But we get rid of bitterness by God changing our heart. Don't let bitterness take roots in your heart, but extend and receive the grace of God. Let us pray. Lord, as your Holy Spirit has been speaking to our hearts today, maybe showing us how the roots of bitterness are beginning to grow or, or even how those roots have, have already buried down uh, far in our hearts and lives. I pray that you would help us to do something about it. Lord, I pray that you would help us to extend grace. I I hope that you would, would help us to, to experience grace so that we don't allow the bitterness to, to control us and to grip us. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Well, this morning as we come to our time of offering, I want to draw your attention to actually several things that are in your, um, in your bulletin this morning. First of all, your connection card. You know, please uh, fill that out as much as uh, you're willing to share with us and, and drop that in the, the offering plate as it, or the offering basket as it's passed. You know, on the back are um, a place that you can in include uh, your know, prayer requests. You know, and also I think there's a yeah, I thought there was something on there to, that also you can uh, can let us know if you're willing to bring cookies for the um, for the the garden walk in, in a couple weeks. So, you know, as the offering plates pass, that's a way that you're you're offering yourself. You're you're responding to uh, to what God's dealing with in, in your heart to, today. You know, also um, the month of June we've been talking about missions in bloom, and uh, you know there's several projects that we. We support through our, our missions giving of the church, and we've challenged everyone during this month of June to, to give something to, to missions, and this is the last day of June, so um, we'll still take your money if you designate it uh, in, in July, but just uh, a reminder that Missions in Bloom is coming to end. Some people have said, oh, I don't bring cash with me or I don't have my, my checkbook. Can we give another way? Can we give by texting? Well, there's a card in, in your bulletin that, that talks about giving by texting. You know, it explains how you, you can do that. If you want to make a donation to, to Missions in Bloom, you know, just type the amount that you want to give and then follow it with the word Bloom, and that will um, be directed in that way. If you don't type Bloom after the amount you want to give, then it will just simply go to the, to the general budget offering. So we prepare for the, to receive our offering. Let, let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for all that you have entrusted to our care. And now as we offer ourselves in, uh, in next steps that we're going to take in this week to, to not allow bitterness to uh, roots to, to grow deep in our, our lives, we pray that you would, um, would receive those next steps and, and help us to, to live that out. Lord, for our tithes and offerings, for, for those offerings that we give to missions, may you bless what we give in order that it might make a difference for your kingdom here in, in Monticello and, and around the world. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. I would invite the ushers to come forward. Um, someone can recruit the ushers there. But, um, Mary Ann, you've got a, some announcement for us. And no, no, we'll. Does this work? Yeah. No ushers? Oh, there they are. Okay. Uh, our 648 
uh, kids will be leaving today for camp, as Pastor Brian mentioned. Please continue to pray for them as they encounter Jesus this week. Come cheer on our softball team tomorrow night at 715 at Roosevelt Middle School. It's time to get your child signed up for a week of fun at Vacation Bible School. It starts next Sunday. Uh, you can see Sarah Kaysen for more details or check the bulletin on where to sign up. There are other upcoming announcements and events in the bulletin, so please check those all out. It's been a great day here at The Current, and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday at either the drive-in service at 8.30, the classic at 9.30, or right back here at The Current at 11 a.m. Let's stand and sing together one more time. Have a great week. This is me.